the other week I, I, I wrote a song that was had been percolating for a couple of weeks. I could feel it just simmering underneath the surface. And I know for me, when something's about to come out, there's this, there's this sense of, of restlessness and a agitation. And I, I know I've got to get time in my studio to sit down and write. Unexpected special delivery careening down cobblestone passageways twisting our fate I just wrote some lyrics but my brain was like this way that way always always what if we had known that you were my beautiful Well, in my studio here, I work on Acid, and no, that's the software, okay? I was thinking about what kind of music I love to listen to when I'm driving in the car, and actually a lot of my songs come to me while I'm driving, so it made me think that maybe that's why it's good music for driving. After the other shocks in our hearts have gone away After we realize who is God and who is yourself I kept thinking, oh my god I wish someone would make music like this. And then I found out and realized, wait a minute, that's what I'm doing. Yay! I was just thinking about um, this week where I had a gig singing this stunning 17th century vocal music. <laughs> And then the next day, I went and jammed with the avant-garde psychedelic blues band that I work with in San Francisco called Tricornered Tent Show. And how much I treasure this eclecticism that I have. I used to resist it. People used to tell me, you know, you really have to focus on one form of music and master that. And I find that it's just not who I am. Embrace eclecticism. to me. I wrote it for Keith, my fiance, who, who died very suddenly and very unexpectedly in 2006. And he's probably had the biggest impact on my life of anybody I've ever known. And I wrote the song for him, but I couldn't get the bridge right. It was driving me crazy. I couldn't get the parts right. And about a week and a half ago, I was driving in the car and I heard it and I knew it. Oh my God, I need a cello part. I need a string part. What if we had known that you were my, my, my,
Now I'm checking the lighting for this shot and also the chair so that it stays in a good place. All right. It was inspired by reading a book called Color by an author of the last name of Finlay. She traveled to Australia to discover the source of ochre. And in her travels, she interfaced with a lot of the Aborigines because they use this in their artwork. I got very inspired about the dream time of our lives, the dream dance of our lives. So it's the earliest written reference to me that there is, I suppose. Oh, this it, is the earliest? But it'd have to be, because there's no writing or anything. The earliest, or otherwise, or the come to the 12th century. Was the monks writing at yeah, the Columbus so Noise. Yeah, so you've yeah. got May's name written down here, for dating probably to the 4th century. Coming back out to the Middle Earth from the Morrigan's Cave. Mm. Careful, little sheep. He's so cute. Holy Moses. Holy <laughs> Moses? We are creating something from nothing. It takes our life force. It takes our juice. What animates and what drives us to create this thing. On my way to the photo shoot for my cover of Dream Dance with the really great photographer Kirsten Litter. So I'll let you know how it goes. When you thought you were done with something, you find some more parts. So here I am just uh, laying in some more uh, kind of ghostly voice parts in Dream Dance. And, um, Dream.